Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah. G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve-O here with another episode of Minecraft Science. <laughs> In the previous um, scientific episode, we looked at the uh, the gravity uh, at gravity and its effects on TNT items and players. Um, this one I really w quickly wanted to touch on something from the previous one, and then I'll move on to a few other things. Um, so firstly, uh, I was told to test this, but um, if you place a block on top of and blocks around a TNT block when it's lit, it's um, it behaves differently when it falls. And so I wanted to test that and um, came up with a really interesting result. So here was our first explosion. It exploded at um, 17 blocks from the ground. The second time it exploded was here, um, which was at 11 blocks from the ground. So in total it fell uh, 73 blocks when not covered and 79 blocks when, when covered around and such. Um, so the acceleration of TNT when it explodes um, at the point of impact. It will be here in a moment. Just give it a second. Um, as you can see, right on the money. Um, the point uh, at the point of impact, um, TNT is moving at 19.75 blocks per second to the minus one. Now, someone was insulting my terminology last time, so this time I'm I'm going to be pedantic and use the uh, the physics term. So I do apologise to those who. Um, <laughs> didn't didn't mind um i was just kind of doing it for those who weren't um didn't have a physics background but anyway so it, tnt moves at 19.75 blocks per second to the minus one and with an acceleration not much different to the previous at 4.937 meters per second squared so the next thing i tested was blocks dropping through water so i made a nice little dispenser setup <laughs> it's pretty awesome and um, this first one has no TN no TNT, no uh, water. The first one, uh, sorry, second, third, fourth, and fifth have it at different points. And I wanted to see um, if that would affect the acceleration, things like that. And so I, I noticed that they were exactly the same. No, there was an extra one here. That's only because of the compact redstoning. And um, so when the the torch turned off again, it uh, set sent out a, f a final pulse, which sent out one more. Anyway, that's not important. And then, so, because that was the same, I thought, well, maybe I'll test, um, hold on, apologies, that was my phone. <laughs> um, on this one, I made it too thick um, to see if there was a difference again. And I noticed that there was absolutely no difference um, in the way that it functioned. Once again, the third block at the end there, it's annoying. <laughs> so, that was a, a flop in, in theory. I actually expected um, water to slow down the, the movement of the blocks, but uh, of the items, but it didn't do it, so, oh uh, well. Anyway, so the next, moving on. Next, let's look at boats. I will test this, um, this water um, dropping mechanism thing with different types of mobs, so I can essentially just use the same system, just replace the, uh, the stone with um, mobs, but we'll see what happens. Actually, mobs will, won't go through. I'll do some testing anyway. Um, moving on. This is my, was my first test for boats, um, but it didn't prove very efficient. So I started dropping boats off of this thing at different heights. I dropped boats off of um, 70, 50, 30, and 10. And um, and I discovered that um, boats drop at... Um, it took... Uh, sorry, they move at um, an average speed of um, 8... 0.33 meters per second. Hang on, let me just make sure I've got that correct. No, my apologies. They move at an average um, velocity of 15.038 meters per second to the minus one, and uh, with an acceleration of. I've got my sheet backwards. <laughs> um, uh, 11.3 uh, blocks per second squared. So that's uh, that's boats. I won't. Well, I can't be stuffed putting boats up there and such because you have to actually place the boat on a block and then destroy the block and it's just messy. So I won't do that. And I haven't got carts up there. Awesome. Hold on two seconds while I replace the carts. Alright, cool. So that's ready for that in a moment. Now the next thing I tested was um, water and lava. 
uh, dropping from uh, above. And I noticed while dropping these, um, something quite surprising. Everything else that I tested has um, some form of continual acceleration. Now with um, water and lava I noticed, as you might be able to see, um, there is no continual acceleration. Um, they ha they reach something what is known as absolute speed. So when they reach this um, this velocity of uh, 4.2 um, blocks per second for water, um, once it reaches uh, 4.2 blocks per second, um, it will stop accelerating and it will will be in what we would call absolute speed. So you would imagine basically that you are in your car driving. And, um, and you're driving up to about 60 kilometers an hour. Once you hit 60 kilometers an hour, your car is no longer accelerating and you're sitting at a constant speed. Well, obviously it fluctuates a little bit, but uh, hypothetically speaking. And um, so that's basically what happens with water and lava. They have that absolute speed. Now lava, I've also, I also tested the uh, recede time as well. Lava drops um, one block, every, sorry, water drops before I get it, move on. Um, one block every 0.14 um, seconds, and lava drops um, one block every zero at uh, 1.15 seconds. So the acceleration of lava was at 0 0.627 meters per second squared, um, and so which is also the velocity um, all the way down as soon as it hits that um, that acceleration speed. So the recede time was slightly faster, not much faster, but slightly. Um, lava, sorry. Water will recede at. <laughs> I didn't write it in front of me. Awesome. Uh, water will recede at 4.5 um, blocks per second to the uh, squared, and lava will recede at 0 0.652 um, blocks per second squared. So that's um, slightly faster, but not much faster. And obviously, this isn't taking into account when lava has spread in which case it takes a little bit longer, or water is spread, in which case it takes a bit longer. But this is just a straight um, up and down movement and recession. Now the next thing I wanted to not lag, ah, <laughs> uh, test was um, was minecarts. Now I don't know why I'm lagging, but I'm lagging. Hold on two seconds while I try and fix Yep, my computer decided it was time to start backing up. So I had uh, Windows backup happening in the background right at that moment. It was awesome. Um, and moving on, we have minecarts. So this first minecart will be pushed by a piston straight in, straight down. Uh, the second one will be pushed off of a mine track, which will be powered uh, straight down. And the third one will have a bit of uh, a velocity behind it before it hits the ground, but velocity and acceleration. And so, let's, and I wanted to compare the three. I wanted to see um, what the differences were. So, firstly, I tested obviously just the normal piston, and um, found that the velocity um, was at 7.14 meters per second to the minus one. Sorry, blocks per second to the minus one. I'm so it's a, such a habit. <laughs> and um, with a an acceleration of 4.46 blocks per second squared. Now the next one was um, the minecart on a track. Now this one was exactly the same, surprisingly, and which I can attribute to it not gaining enough um, acceleration by the time it hit that block. That block there being a deterrent in its uh, velocity. So those two hit the ground with um, from that block at the exact same time. Um, they would hit the ground at the exact same time if given the chance. And um, this last one was a little bit different, obviously because it's gained a little bit of a velocity coming down, and um, that was measured at uh, nine um, meters uh, blocks per second to the minus one, and um, with a acceleration of eight point one blocks per second squared. Now the acceleration and the velocity obviously gained a little bit from its time on this track. Uh, the track itself, from there to there, the cart was moving at uh, 7.54 blocks per second to the minus one, with an acceleration of 7.11 blocks per second squared. So let me turn off the rain, and um, so when it hit here, it lost a lot of its uh, velocity, which obviously gave us a different reading for um, our acceleration, but it hit here 
and um, and then it fell down there. So the velocity and the acceleration um, were not completely stopped because otherwise it would have had the exact same time as those two, but it was slightly halted when it hit this and then when it went straight down. So yeah, that's a bit of Minecraft science again. Um, once again, um, there is a chance obviously that some of my results may not be exactly on the standard, but um, I've done my best. <laughs> so um, if you see any um, any flaws in my um, in my methods of testing, uh, let me know. I'll attempt to rectify it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm Stevo, uh, and I will catch you later. Also, if you want to see anything else tested or um, any other block types or whatever tested to see their gravity or whatever, let me know. Leave a message, something like that, and I'll try to include them in the next uh, Minecraft Science. <laughs> in the yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you later. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah.